Hello again. Um, today we are going to start talking about resistance and resistivity. Again, uh, this should start off as a bit of a recap of stuff that you've done at IGCSE, but we're going to quite quickly add on to stuff um, that's required for the A-level. Um, so by the end of this, you should understand what resistance is, how to calculate it, uh, for a combination of resistors and for differently shaped materials. Um, so you need to give the equations for resistance and resistivity. Uh, you would then be able to uh, qualitatively describe how you'd expect a resistance to change around a circuit, um, and we're going to look at how you can derive equations for resistors in series and parallel. So, first thing to think about is what really is current? We know that uh, current, which has the symbol I remember, is equal to the rate of flow of charge. So it's a total amount of charge that moves through a, a wire or a component, per second, hence why we get Q for total amount of charge divided by T. Um, but let's think about what actually happens in a wire. So I've got a wire here with cross-sectional area A, and within that wire I've got a bunch of electrons. So what I want to try and find is, what is the total electrons in a bit of wire? So how do I find the total number of electrons? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what I'm going to say is that the total, the total number of electrons, that is equal to uh, this number n multiplied by cross-sectional area times length. Now, what are all these terms and what am I talking about here? n is going to be the electrons per cubic metre. Um, Obviously that varies from uh, material to material, but um, so in a metal you'll have lots of electrons that can conduct per metre cubed. In a block of wood you have zero, that's why wood doesn't conduct. Um, and then I've got cross-section area times length, so let's just label on length there. So that will be volume. Um, so that's pretty simple. Basically, uh, if I have a bit of a conductor, then I can see the total electrons that are there is equal to how many of how many electrons there are per cubic metre multiplied by however many cubic metres I have, which is the volume. Why is that useful? Well, that tells me what Q is, because I can then say that Q is equal to the charge on a single electron multiplied by the number of electrons per cubic metre multiplied by the volume. And oh look, I can now substitute these two into each other and I can get current is equal to E N A L over T. But wait, there's more! Um, if you look at this little section here, oops, I have L divided by T. So that is a length that way divided by a time. Length divided by time, what does that look a lot like? Well, that is the velocity that the electrons are travelling at. That's what velocity is, it's a length divided by a time. So I can rewrite this equation as current is equal to N A E V. And this is a standard equation that you need to be able to know and derive. The current in a wire is equal to the number of electrons per cubic metre in that wire multiplied by its cross-sectional area multiplied by the charge on an electron, multiplied by the velocity that they are travelling at. One of the really cool things you'll find is because n is always massive, because there are loads of electrons per cubic metre, v actually ends up being a tiny, tiny number. Electrons travel really slowly, and we're going to prove that in a future lesson. Um, this is for metals, or with electrons. Um, sometimes, and you notice this in your mock, sometimes we have things that aren't electrons. In that case, I can say I is equal to NAQV, where this little Q is the charge per current carrier. So if I have alpha particles, um, this would be twice the charge of an electron. Sometimes you might need to use that one as well. Okay. So with that in mind, we know now what current really is. What is resistance? Well, the CIE definition, the definition you'll see online, and the one that you must write in the exams, is it is a measure of the opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. So basically, it's how much does the circuit try to stop current. 
But actually, I don't think that's the most useful definition um, to think about in your head. I think a more useful one is to think, well, resistance is a measure of how much EMF you must provide in order to make an amp of current flow. And why is that? Well, we know that V is equal to IR, so R is equal to V divided by I. So in other words, it is how many volts do you need per amp of current? So it's how many volts per amp? Um, and I think that sometimes that's a little bit more helpful, because remember that this V would be an EMF, or epsilon, um, and that's the uh, electromotive force. Electromotive force originally meant the amount that we're pushing the electrons around. So resistance is kind of telling us how much do I need to push my electrons with a battery or a power supply in order to get current to flow. Now, but obviously, this is the key equation that we need here. This is called Ohm's Law. Um, and you should be pretty familiar with using Ohm's Law uh, from GCSE. So another thing that should be vaguely familiar from IGCC then is resistivity. Resistivity is a fundamental property of the material that tells us how much it intrinsically tries to resist the flow of current. Um, and the reason for this becomes really obvious if you think about this block that I've got here. It has a cross-sectional area A and a length L. Well, if you remember that resistance, all things have resistance, all things try to stop current from flowing through them. So if I make this bit of conductor longer, uh, there's more distance that the electrons have to travel through, so there's more stuff to try and stop them. So the longer the distance, the greater the resistance is going to be. Cross-sectional area does the opposite. Um, if you think about electrons trying to fight their way through this material, if you have a bigger cross-sectional area, there's more paths that the electrons can travel through, and so we have a lower resistance. Um, so we can actually construct this pre easily. Um, first of all, we're going to give a symbol for resistivity, and we're going to give that the symbol rho, R-H-O. It is not a P, it is a rho. Um, so let's see if we can construct this equation. So we just want to think about the resistance of a material. What will that be? Well, we know that if the length gets longer, resistance goes up. So I'm going to say that it's multiplied by the length Let's make this neat. So it's multiplied by the length of the uh, material. And just by convention, we say that the bigger the resistivity, the more it tries to stop it, because that's what the definition says. I also know that larger cross-sectional areas make it lower, so it's going to be divided by A. Um, and that's it. It's just uh, resistivity is RL over A, or rho L over A, sorry. Um, if I want to get resistivity, then I just rearrange this equation. So it's RA over L. And there you go, that's resistivity. Um, I'm going to give you a load of questions in the lesson about this, um, but basically you should be able to be pretty familiar with this. If cross-section area drops, uh, resistance goes up. If length increases, resistance goes up. All right, so now we're going to start thinking about how we can use Ohm's law to do some pretty cool stuff. Um, so here I have two resistors in series. And one of the most common problems that you get asked is, right, can you replace that circuit with one resistor instead? And, will, and if you do that, um, will everything about these two together equal one resistor. And it turns out, yes, you can, and it's terribly easy to do. Um, you might already know the equation, but we're actually going to try and derive it here first of all. So the first thing to think about is Kirchhoff's first law, which I'm going to call K1. Now, Kirchhoff's first law, if you remember from last lecture, that tells us that the total sum of the EMS in the circuit is equal to the total sum of the voltages or the voltage drops in the circuit. So I'm going to label the battery saying that will give us EMF, uh, or just the EMF, and this R1 will give us voltage 1, R2 will have a voltage two, drop 2 across it. Because you should remember again from IGCSE, we'll get a voltage drop across here, and then a voltage drop across R1. Alright, so what does Kirchhoff's uh, first law tell us? Kirchhoff's first law tells us that the current through the battery is exactly the same as the current through R1, which is exactly the same as the current through 
R2. Um, so I'm just going to make that really clear. So I've got current 1 there. Going through here, I've got current, that will be current 2. So I'll call that IEMF. And through here, I will have current 1. Uh, so the current all point to the same because this is one closed loop. There are no nodes, there are no junctions, so the current everywhere should be the same. What does Kirchhoff's second law tell me? Kirchhoff's second law tells me that the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the voltages. So I can write it like that. That's pretty cool. What can I do with that? Well, now I can use Ohm's law. I know from Ohm's law that, so I'll put here Ohm's, I know that V across any component is equal to the current through it multiplied by its resistance. So what does that tell me? Well, that I can then say, okay, combine these two, and I can say that the EMF is equal to the current in resistor 1 multiplied by the resistance of resistance of resistor 1 plus the current in resistor 2 multiplied by the resistance of resistor 2. Why does that help me? Well, um, I know from up here that all the currents are the same, so I can just say that the EMF is equal to I times R1 plus I times R2. And because I know now that these two I's must be the same from Kirchhoff's first law, I can therefore say that the EMF is equal to I multiplied by R1 plus R2. Um, and, well, look at what? Look at this. If I go back to Ohm's law again, I can now say that the total resistance must be equal to R1 plus R2, because it will be the same circuit. If I have this equivalent circuit, that will also have the same current, because that's the definition of having an equivalent circuit, one where the voltage drops and the currents are the same. So, um, I can just say, quite simply, RT is equal to R1 plus R2. That's for series resistors. Um, and you should know that from IGCSE. But here we've used Kirchhoff's laws to prove it, which is a pretty nice thing to be able to do. What about in parallel? Oops, I've put the wrong diagram in here, so let's just ignore this. I'm going to say there's R1, there's R2. Sorry about that. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Um, what can I say now? Um, so I'm going to create here three loops. I'm just going to put that there to make it a bit simpler, just ignore all of that stuff. Um, so let's think about my current loops. Remember what we said about uh, Kirchhoff's uh, second law for assault. Um, we can say that the sum of the EMFs in a loop is equal to the sum of the voltages. Um, so let's think about what loops I have. I have one that goes through my battery and then through R1, so I'm going to call that loop 1. And I have a second one that comes down here through the battery and then through resistor 2. Those are my two closed loops. Um, so what can I do with that? Um, let's think about Ohm's law then. Ohm's law tells me that uh, the voltage across resistor 1 is equal to the resistance of resistor 1 multiplied by its by whatever the current it is, and the voltage across resistor 2 is equal to the resistance of resistor 2 multiplied by the current times resistor 2. Now, Kirchhoff's first law tells us that the current into a node is equal to the current out of a node. Now, we have nodes here. There's a node here. So... I can't say that the current, these two currents are identical. But what I can say is, well, look at these loops again. In the first loop, it goes through the battery and then through R1. And that's it. So in that closed loop, I can say for loop 1, the EMF is equal to R1 times I1. And for loop 2, 
I can say that the same EMF, because the second loop goes through the, excuse me, second loop goes through the battery, then through R2, so that would be R2 times I2. Um, so what else can I say? I'm, I'm going to redraw this diagram again because I think it's getting a little bit confusing otherwise. So uh, let me, yeah, let me just do it down here. So there's my battery. There's the first resistor. There's my second. So that's R1. That's R2. And I'm just going to redo the labels. So I'm going to have EMF there, V1 there. To there. Now let's go back to Kirchhoff's first law and let's think about currents that we've got going on. So here um, I'm going to call this going down here uh, VI, no, I'm going to call it I3. Here I'm going to call it I1 and here I'm going to call it I2. So think about what's happening. We have um, a amount of current coming out of the battery and um, common sense should tell you that's going to be the largest amount of current because the electrons are going to come out of the battery and then some are going to go through R1 and the others are going to go through R2. So what I can say is that I3 is equal to I1 plus I2 and hopefully that will kind of make sense to you. Well now um, that tells me that, what does that tell me? Uh, oh yeah, okay, sorry. So um, let's think about Ohm's law again. Um, Ohm's law, let's, what, what is I3? How can we find I3? Well, I3 uh, from V is equal to IR. I3 will be the EMF divided by the total resistance of the circuit. Again, remember we're trying to get a equivalent resistance, so if we want to replace that with the resistor. Well, there's I3, I, and now I just need to find out what is I1 and I2. Well, let's just rearrange these equations. I can say that I1 is equal to the EMF divided by R1. I can say that I2 is equal to the EMF divided by R2. So if I substitute it into here, I get, drum roll please, uh, epsilon over RT, so EMF divided by RT is equal to I1, which is EMF over R1, plus EMF over R2. Now look, all those have a common factor of EMF, so I can cancel it out, and I get 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And again, this should be familiar to you from IGCSE, but now we see why. We see how we can do it using Ohm's law and using Kirchhoff's laws. And this is why these laws are really useful to us. So a couple of things to talk about in summary. Uh, firstly, uh, we need to know that uh, current is equal to NAQV, where Q is the charge of whatever we're dealing with, N is the number of whatever we're dealing with per meter cube, A is a cross-section area, and V is the velocity we're travelling at. We also need to know that the resistance of a material is equal to its resistivity multiplied by its length, divided by its cross-sectional area. We need to know Ohm's law, which is V is IR, we need to know the equation for resistors in series is RT, total resistance, is equal to the resistance of the first plus the resistance of the second. And we need to know that 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 for parallel circuits. Um, we are going to do a heck of a lot of practice of these in the lesson. You're going to be sick to death of it. Um, but what I suggest for any of these problems, like I did in the example earlier, start with Kirchhoff's laws. Write down what you know, write down what you can find, and then keep applying Ohm's law to each bit to see if you can work out something sensible. It's kind of like doing a Sudoku in your head um, with lots of different things going on. But it's really satisfying once you start to get it. So for this, I really suggest just lots and lots of practice. You are undoubtedly going to have questions after this lecture, so please write them down, talk to me about them in the lesson, and I will see you then.